Welcome to the Just Barbarian Things podcast actual play of Call of Cthulhu 7th Edition's Masks of Nyarlathotep. Ready? Your sinus is okay? Is it okay? Okay. Hello, barbarians, and welcome back to our playthrough of Masks of Nyarlathotep in Call of Cthulhu. I am Rainy, your keeper for this game, and with me I have Santiago playing Quentin Q to his friends. Howdy. Um, I have Rich playing Stephen. With a PH. With a PH. <laughs> Jesse playing Isaac. A. And Jessica playing Sister Mary Bennett. Hello. Alright, last time, the <clears throat> masks of Nyarlathotep. Um, you went to meet with Professor Nemezio Sanchez, who said his assistant was in the basement getting an artifact related to a letter or journal entry that they were translating from a conquistador named Gaspar Figueroa. Um, it was taking her a really long time to get back, so you all went down into the basement to see if you could figure out what distracted her. And it turns out she was distracted by a horrible garbage disposal mouth vampire who was trying to suck out all of her inner bits uh, through his gross toothy maw and you beat him up and <laughs> cut his legs and now he is laying lifeless on the floor of the basement um, Sister Mary has packed the wound Senorita Rizzo to stabilize her and you're getting a moment to breathe and kind of take in what exactly is going on. Um, Jesse, can Isaac make a spot hidden roll, please? Sixty-one. That is a failure. Okay. So no, he cannot. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> you're good. You still have um, your amazing golden artifact that you <laughs> procured during the combat. Um, still feeling good about it. Everything's wonderful. Sister Mary, I will have you also make a spot hidden roll, please. Spot hidden. Uh, okay. Um, a... What's the success between the two small numbers? It's a hard success. Hard success. What's if it's below all the numbers? That's an extreme success. Oh, it's just a hard success. Yeah. <laughs> you get the horns going off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I have that in here, but yeah. You notice, since you're kind of sitting over the woman um, holding pressure on the wound, um, you can see what looks like a hastily stashed notebook in her pocket. Um, it looks like she kind of shoved it in there when she was maybe startled or something down here. Not saying you have to rifle through her stuff, but you do notice that there's like a large notebook in a pocket much too small for it that, you know, it's kind of peeking out since she's on the ground here as you dragged her right. <laughs> across the room a little bit. So you do note that. Otherwise, um, what you all see in this area is the body of what now looks much more like Mendoza. The mouth parts have shrunk him back to a, a human looking profile, but he is not moving, um, laying on the ground in kind of a pool of blood and oil. Mm. And, uh, <laughs> and various- Blood and fire grease. Yeah, various Ooh. like crates and boxes have been pulled off of shelves in the struggle and kind of litter the floor. And there's a table at the far side that has been, if there was anything on it, stuff was knocked off. And the bare light bulbs kind of swinging slightly from all of the excitement. Is there anything that you would like to do? Yes. I would like to look around for something I can use to tie the Mendoza monster fast. Sure, make a luck roll. All right. Cool. Success. All right. Regular success. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a 41 out of 80. Um, I'm looking for yeah. another Oh, yeah, because we didn't like, do those. But I didn't but do my fifths and halves and whatnot. But it's more than half if it's 80. Yeah. Yeah. So regular success. All right. So you find some, I mean, sturdy looking twine, but it's not like rope. 
Right, like stuff that was, is used to secure crates and packages and that yeah. sort of thing. You do enough passes, yeah. it might do some some good. Sure. Especially if it's, you know, wrists behind the back and, and whatnot. Sure. Maybe feet or something. Okay. That sort of deal. Yep. <clears throat> so I'll have you, unless you want to use a different skill, do a dexterity check. Yes, that'll work. Okay. All right, cool. That is a regular success. Okay. Yeah, you feel like your knots are solid and experienced knot tire that you are. You're, you feel pretty good about that they'll hold um, for various pressures that may be placed upon them. So there is this bound, cut up, slightly bleeding male figure. Before mm. you. Oh, okay. He's still still bleeding people blood, it looks like, from his wound. Yeah, I mean, there's a, a light seepage. It's not, like, spurting or anything, but... He's bleeding fat. Mm. Just liquids. I was going to say, mm -hmm. if he's bleeding Orville Redenbacher, that might be a, a clue. <laughs> yeah, movie theater butter-flavored <laughs> butter oil. Butter-flavored oil Sick. coming yeah. out of his... Knee wound. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Gross. Right. Um, I want to get that book that's in her pocket. Okay. So I, I'm not trying to be sneaky about it. I'm no. just gonna pick it up and. So pulling it out, it's obvious that it like she's some sort of like graduate student or something, and so it has various notes from courses that she's taking. Mm -hmm. But of specific interest, it seems that she is has a copy of a manuscript that she's working on translating okay um and so you can see like there's an original copy of what the text was which you don't necessarily understand mm -hmm. and then the next page is her translation of whatever that page was okay so i know you don't like reading things into the record especially when this holy one. shit oh, yeah. <laughs> so i'll handle that for you god damn <laughs> all right so i'm gonna get her, called on in class really. <laughs> <laughs> her translation says spanish written by gaspar figueroa 1543 on vellum figueroa she notes is a spaniard who had traveled to peru with francisco pizarro according to the text Figueroa set out to seek his own fortune following Pizarro's assassination in 1541. He was accompanied by Hernando Ruiz, Diego Garrido, and Luis de Mendoza, and Pedro de Velasco, fellow conquistadors who had served with Pizarro. They traveled into the southern highlands of the Andes, looking for treasure, hoping to make their fortunes before heading back to Spain and retiring in luxury. Hearing rumors of an ancient temple filled with gold, the men set off into the mountains southwest of Lake Titicaca, I told you every session. There, they found a pyramid surrounded by a maze-like structure of underground tunnels. The walls of the tunnels were inlaid with intricate gold carvings. The men pried out a large section of the gold, exhausting themselves in the attempt. That night, as they rested, an evil sickness befell Figueroa's companions. In the morning light, they looked gaunt and death-like. Complaining of agonizing hunger, they pursued Figueroa. <laughs> Thanks, Maisie. They're so hungry. <laughs> In the morning, uh, blah, blah, blah. Complaining of agonizing hunger, they pursued Figueroa. De, De Mendoza caught up with him and started to devour him like a human leech. Figueroa shot his friend in the head and fled, pausing only to snatch up as much of the gold as he could carry. Figueroa eventually arrived back in Lima, hoping to get passage home, but he was too weakened by his ordeal. Figueroa describes himself as wasted, little more than a walking corpse. I read final confessions as Figueroa's attempt to lift the guilt that his avarice had placed upon him. He believed his fate and that of his companions was brought about by their desecration of a holy place, and his most fervent wish was that he could undo the damage he had inflicted. He describes how he can still hear his friend's voices crying out with inhuman hunger, and how in the dark of night he can hear another voice ancient and seductive, promising him eternal life if he returns to the temple. The voice told Figueroa how to contact it, but it seems Figueroa was too afraid to ever attempt this. A postscript written by a priest who performed last rites 
states that Figueroa died a day after completing his final confessions. His last words were an entreaty to whatever gods were listening to forgive him his blasphemies. All right. Oh so those are her notes on her translation of the it's document. Extensive. Okay. Um, oh, and this is what she would look like if she wasn't like half sucked dry right now. So there she is, Trinidad right. Rizzo. Yeesh. Mm. Yeah, and you do see in her notebook, kind of used as a bookmark, is basically her student ID. Okay. And it says Trinidad Rizzo on it. Alright. Well, it seems like we should probably get her to a hospital. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take uh, Mendoza to the authorities. Yeah. Sure. Uh, um, this is definitely good. a good point to make a plan, check in with folks upstairs or whatever you'd like to do. So just let me know what you're thinking and we'll go from there. Okay. Well, I think we should drag along Mendoza and check in with. Um, uh, Professor Sanchez and let him know what happened and get Senorita uh, Riso to the hospital. I don't know if anyone has a. Yeah, I'll go to the plan. hospital with. Um, Seems like a good plan. Rizzo. <laughs> <laughs> right, so there are it's some really stairs to traverse with a couple of bodies, basically. So who's going to be doing that? Or are you teaming up, or how are you handling it? Oh, man. Uh, uh, strong or are you leaving them down here and having people come down? And no what would you like to do? Well, I mean, I can carry the girl, probably. Okay, yeah. Or me and you can tag team the dude. Uh, Sounds <laughs> Oh, I mean, I'll try to... To carry the guy, I don't know if uh, if I'm equal to the task, sure. but I'm determined to see this creature to justice. Yeah, unless there's something else you'd like to use, that'd be a strength check, typically. Yeah. Okay. Figure that's just a straight up strength check. Try and drag this dude upstairs. All right, but that is not a success. Okay. So yeah, you try to lift him. But it's almost like he's full of extra pounds of fluid or something. Um, and he's a little heavier than you're expecting. All right. So I'm struggling to to drag him along. Got him by the, the heels. <laughs> All right. Well, that's all I'm doing. So Q is struggling to lift the tied man creature. Poor Q. Poor me. Poor me. <laughs> I know. Right. I I'll, I'll try to help him. Yeah, if there's Just two of you doing it, I'm not going to make you roll for it because <laughs> you can coordinate. Isaac and Q are, you know, furniture lifting oh, Mendoza. yeah. Doing the whole one person under the armpits, the other person. Get his legs! <laughs> yeah. Who, who wants to walk up the stairs backwards? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That whole coordination. Yeah. All right. So the two of you are handling that. And then we have... Miss Riza. Yeah. Well, I would look at Steven and be like, well, <laughs> clearly. Well, come on now. <laughs> Get to it. <laughs> chop, chop. Chop, chop. Right. So, pitter -patter. Pitter -patter. Yeah. <laughs> so Steven's probably carrying most of the weight and you're like mostly managing her wound, I would assume, <laughs> yeah. at that point. I'll have you roll strength just to make sure that there's no push to you. Tiptoeing along And you can have a bonus cocaine. die, if you like, because she is much lighter. Sprinkling. <laughs> Extreme. Oh, yes. Yeah, you're just like, she's light, and you're just like, I can be a horror room, man. Sister Mary's like running behind you, trying to hold the, <laughs> Slow down. the kind of wound dressing in place. Don't jostle. And you make it to the top of the stairs in time to see, probably based on all the noise that's been happening between the shouting of obscenities and the various noises of fisticuffs and things being thrown into shelves and whatnot. You see Elias and the professor kind of like moving towards the door, like what the hell is going on? And they see, well, I guess I suppose first, a bound Mendoza being carried 
up the stairs by, by two of your number. And Les says, what the hell? Is that Mendoza? What are you doing? This damn son of a bitch was trying to, I don't know, eat Miss Rizzo down in the basement. Literally sucking her dry. I can't explain it. And so you are shortly followed by um, Stephen easily carrying the emaciated body of one <laughs> Trinidad Rizzo. And the professor, you know, exclaims various things in Spanish, probably something along the lines of, Ay Dios mio, and uh, runs over <laughs> to check on her um, and the wound which you've packed so carefully. He with says, cocaine. Yeah, with cocaine and <laughs> linens <laughs> of dubious cleanliness. <laughs> he says, we must get her to the hospital. My, my God. Because she looks gross. I mean, as you can see in the picture, she's barely recognizable as herself. Especially compared to the ID picture that yeah. we saw on her student ID. Hmm. So, Somebody um, kept that for later use, apparently. No, that's right here. Uh, wait, no. That's, uh, that's uh, Rose? Sanchez. Yep. Roxanne. Sanchez, Roxanne. Yeah. Professor Roxanne. Professor <laughs> Roxanne. <laughs> and, um... Hooked up. Chum, chum. Yeah. Um, you guys made your group luck roll, though, which means you got down there while she was still being attacked instead of just finding her mummified corpse. Yeah. So, oh, okay. there is that. <laughs> Good um, job, Jessica. Saved a life. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. And, uh, so there's much... <laughs> fussing and such. The professor's calling for people to help and to bring her to the hospital. And um, Elias says, how did Mendoza do that? Like pointing to the wound that's packed on her chest. Well, with his mouth. Like, let me sketch what he looked like at the time. <laughs> yeah. Let me show you this uh, perfect <laughs> rendering. <laughs> Does anyone have arts and craft drawing? Oh, <laughs> Jesse's like, let me knit you <laughs> the yeah. story of this event. <laughs> I'd actually put him down and pick his head up by the hair and start poking around his mouth parts with the tip of my uh, my knife. Yeah, they looking look to see if there's any evidence very... of what it looked like. I before. mean, his face is real greasy. Yeah. Um, and a little bit bloody from his interaction yeah. with you. All shiny, like yeah. he just ate a leg of lamb. Yeah, <laughs> like a turkey leg at the fair, you know. But his mouth looks very normal, human-like even. I can't see any evidence of what yeah. it appeared to be before. No. Okay. Well, as I'm inspecting it like this, I know I'm going to sound crazy, but... When we came upon him, his mouth had transformed into some sort of toothy ring of sucking power. I don't know how else to explain it. Right. He kind of looks at you a little like, mm-hmm. And it like looks at the rest of you like, really? Is that is that what happened? It's kind of a little loopy. <laughs> you wouldn't have believed it if you hadn't seen it. <laughs> All right. So the rest of you are saying like, yep. That's legit. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happened. Yeah. yeah. Not you, though. So like, I, I, see see like, no. <laughs> I see nothing. That guy's crazy. I think he stole I something. just like... <laughs> I'll go back down and see nothing. Him. I just... He's <laughs> <laughs> <Just, like, laughs> like, like, yeah, right. that was unexpected. Well, maybe mm. there's more to this death cult and their practices and these stories of these vampires and I was hmm and uh so did you find anything else down there I'm sorry to ask it with a an injury and all wait is this is this the professor or this is Elias the professor yeah, is like Elias well I would tell Elias like I think people. we saw I think he it looked a lot like what he described as one of those Karasiri that word uh huh yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it looks not. like well, like it looks something like that. Elias? He's the Jackson, Jackson Elias, Elias is yeah. oh, Jesse Hughes. The dude that's yeah. I got his name dude. in two different spots. Yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah. I'm like, well, who's this guy? And he has four different names. <laughs> the yeah. Yeah. Jesse Elias Hughes, Jackson Elias. Yeah, yeah. Four, four different first names. <laughs> like, yeah, we need to settle. Yeah, yeah. So, pick one. Just pick one. Do we have Mendoza what, on the ground now? 
I mean, unless you guys are still yeah. lifting him. Or Can I do a quick pat down? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, go ahead and do Because they've already taken uh, Rizzo off to... Yeah, or the sorry. professor has kind of yeah. called Rizzo some people over. over, like, thanked you for, yeah. like, keeping yeah. her stable, and they're moving her away probably to the university hospital or clinic. Yeah. So. Uh, so not just leaving me, like... Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> that is exactly my skill. Okay, um, so it's a success. So I was crouched yeah. over him, holding his head up by the hair, poking around in his <laughs> mouth with my big fuck off Bowie knife. So I, I see you coming over to like give him a riffle, and then so I you know stand up and drop the head, bud, <laughs> pop, pop. Yeah. sheath my knife and stand stand aside to let you do your thing. All right. <laughs> Um, I'd say with that role, you're going to notice a couple of things. Um, first, as you pat him down, you know, like, because his hands are, like, bound like this, basically, that he has geometric rectangular burn on both hands, mm. um, where, like, skin has come off because it was so severe. And uh, other than that, let me see if he has anything cool gotcha. on him. <laughs> he does have <laughs> Ooh. He There's the blade <laughs> that he had been wielding. Um, is still on him, um, which I would say without really even rolling, you recognize as being antique, I would say, to say the least, although you can choose to certainly inspect it more specifically. Go ahead and make sure he's disarmed. He's wearing a weird yeah. sword, but otherwise, I mean, he just seems to be dressed normally, like he wasn't expecting to need anything else with him. Okay. Yeah. That's an excellent idea. I'm going to take this sword. Mm -hmm. I need to put it in your examine treasure. this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to examine this with a pawn bird. I mean, <laughs> Can I give him a, a once over more like from a medical perspective? You absolutely may do so. Yeah. Just do medicine for that or first aid? Medicine or first aid is both are fine for this. Um, success. Right, regular success? Regular success. Okay. Um, there's definitely no sign of like breathing or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't appear to be bleeding anymore. Okay. And he's very still. Yeah. Um, I mean, still warm and everything at this point, but um, no signs of life. Can I, like, see... Because I have, like, demonic lore and stuff. Can I, like, see if he has any reaction to, like, the crucifix or anything like that? Sure. I want to do that. Okay. I'm going to have you roll a cult just to see how you handle that. Uh, or a demonic lore if that's better for you. I'm okay with that too. I rolled a 96, so I'm kind of fucked either way. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, you're going to, uh, like, usurp rifling through your stuff to get, like, things out of your kit and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And um, as you go to, like, start testing him, basically, mm -hmm. it seems that in getting help to pull Senior Dealer Rizzo away, um, that the professor had also notified authorities who are coming to right. collect him. It seems they've gotten a story from him that this was the attacker, although probably the more supernatural parts of that were not included right. in the story. And in a mix of like kind of broken English and Spanish, you guys are able to make out that they're demanding that he be turned over to them for examination. Fair enough. For autopsy. Oh, he's dead? He appears to be dead, yes. Oh. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> no signs of life. Bleeding has stopped. Y'all beat the hell out of him. The bridge punched the soul right out of that guy. <laughs> <laughs> it had nothing to do with how I hamstrung him. It was all this guy. <laughs> nah. Uh, I mean, all right. Yeah. So you... For one, it was my intention to bring him to the... Right, you did, you did mention that. Uh, anyway, yeah. I didn't know that he had succumbed to his injuries. Well, I mean, you could certainly examine him a bit before you hand him over, but that seems to... He had stopped moving and he doesn't appear to be breathing. Yeah. Okay. Nah. If someone, like, kneels over him and does the whole two fingers to the neck and then looks up and goes... <laughs> like, shakes their head. Shakes their head and... <laughs> Closes his eyes and all that <laughs> Hollywood shit. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, oh, that guy's clearly an expert, so. Yeah, yeah. the player thing, though. Like, this thing describes a dude named Mendoza getting shot in the head and mm -hmm. then coming back. Mm -hmm. And the wall not coming back, but. 
this dude's name. The document does describe a conquistador named Luis de Mendoza. He's got an antique sword. Oh. And you can roll archaeology or history or whatever you have if you want to take a quick look at it. We'll do that. And then I was planning on doing a little divination. I mean, Jessica's the only one that's read the letter. <laughs> Jesse's the only one that will probably know about the sword. Yeah. And you can obviously choose to share whatever you like with each other, but you never oh, have to. You read it? You didn't, like, read it aloud or whatever? Or... She's just like, hmm, interesting. I was, you know, it definitely fits that time period um, where you would, ex and it, the design is in line with what conquistadors carried at the time. Like, oh, well, this is an old sword. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is conquistador era type. But like so, very well maintained for being as old as Well loved, is. yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Did you share the letter? Or did you I will now, it? yeah. I mean, I wasn't like in the middle of treating this woman like, blah, 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 this letter that I just found, I need to read it out to you. But yeah, like so, yeah, when it's kind of chilled down. They've taken away the police are yeah. carrying Mendoza off and, and you're sharing yeah. the details. Like, Isn't this interesting? And Jackson Elias is there as well, unless you're choosing to hide it. No, I'll tell him. Yeah. Hide it. He's like, oh, yeah. Huh. I mean, it's kind well, of So after to hearing those two things, yeah, can I like... Point. Roll an intelligence check or <laughs> something to put, put two and two together. <laughs> yeah, so that's so what we call an idea roll. Um, idea. But yeah, you can make an intelligence Ooh. check or an, an education roll. check. Uh, your choice. Oh. It's mostly like if you guys get really stuck, you can make an idea roll okay. as well. Wow. And I can give you some cues. It has idea. Oh, right underneath it, right there. Did you get it? Well, I think cool. Did you do it? No? I might spend some luck though. Okay. It might be worth it. You're close. I'm four points off. Okay, well, yeah. But I have a 90. Okay. And I rolled a 94. Okay. Because. You can definitely spend luck. As rich do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, I think I'm going to spend four and bring rich roll. That down to one, two, three, four. Never going to roll you down. <laughs> yeah. So you're definitely putting together, I mean, this man was introduced to you as Mendoza. Right. <laughs> Jackson Elias and his investigations had people talking about someone named De Mendoza. And stories of these Karasiri, who are weird vampire things that suck fat out of people. And then Mendoza had a weird spooky mouth and was sucking grease and blood out of mm -hmm. poor mm -hmm. Senor Rizzo. And you're like... And he has a conquistador. <laughs> you can see yeah, the light bulb and he has a conquistador Bing! era sword that yeah. is well maintained. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you're like... Shit just got weird. <laughs> is it? Um, I'm a kind of like hot foot over to the cops real quick. Yeah, yeah have they like, taken him away yet? Something's yeah, fucking they're they're curious. <laughs> can I? It's a process. Like, can I stop them? You and can. just I just want to check his head. Uh, for like signs of a wound. Yeah, a wound. Oh, um, sure. Do you want to do spot hidden or medicine or first aid? Medicine. Sure. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell him. Make sure they keep him tied up. Mm. Time up he might be dead, but just leave him time. Oh, <laughs> time up better. <laughs> time up better. Um, no, I'm gonna better. have you go ahead because you don't have Spanish as a language. I'm assuming. <laughs> no. Okay. Hola, the uh, rope. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, dress clothing. <laughs> um, so I'm going to have you roll your language own to see if you can simplify what you're saying in a way that's effective, but without just talking louder and slower. Uh, <laughs> the best way. But what Could do I do it as first aid? Yeah. Sure. Then it's a success. Okay. But regular success? Rolling uh, good. Rolling. Nice. Yes. Okay. Um, there are no signs dice. of previous scarring or Gotta injury. Use the new okay. dice from just Noted. Hmm. That cool. is an extreme success. Okay. Hi. This is not your first time in a different <laughs> country. As a, a serviceman <laughs> and hired muscle gets sent to places mm. that need a punch in. <laughs> <laughs> you know how to communicate, even if they don't know the proper language, which is English. <laughs> um, the, pro the Queen's English. And so between, you know, gesturing and simplified verbiage, Grabbing you're able to, rope. like, explain, like, you know, Q 
keep this tied without really giving them like be like sounding like a crazy person like he's a spooky undead man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's going to come back. And they're they seem a little like okay, but they're like they you seem adamant, so they're like sure, sure, like we're just getting him back to for you know they're you know doing the motions for like autopsy examination by a medical professional and. Uh, but they seem to be keeping him tied. They're not untying him and loading him into anything or anything like that. So, Jackson Elias says, well, uh, I guess, I mean, there are a few options. We can pretend like none of this happened and see what <laughs> Larkin says next, because this was his man. We can go try to confront him, or we can just start setting off on our own and seeing if we can figure out this whole mess. I mean, we know he was heading up to up Lake Titicaca Way. We have this letter. We can talk a little bit more to the... Uh, I told you every session. <laughs> uh, we can talk a little bit more to the professor when he gets back about the locations he was narrowing down for the pyramid himself. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I'm just well, uh, I'm just the writer here. <laughs> uh, Larkin might be in a bit of a spot himself. Because Mendoza... Just giving him some drinks, some medicine. True, you did mention that Mendoza was handling his mm. sickness. Also, it's uh, it's always better to uh, keep an eye on the devil you know. So, if we stay with his troop, we can keep tabs on their activities as opposed to making an adversary out of them. And merely speculating. So we need to maintain our position within that organization for now. In my opinion, of course. Right, so tell them what we found with Mendoza or play it quiet? Hmm. So I have to think tactically. Well, I say we should straight sh shoot straight with him and let him know that... Uh, Mendoza was discovered having attacked a uh, student at the local university and has been uh, taken into custody by the local authorities. Well, yeah, we can tell him we saw him. We don't have to tell him everything we saw. Exactly. Mm -hmm. well, happy to follow your lead. I mean, they say the pen's mightier than the sword, but I don't know that that's the case. Indeed. All right. Let's go have a toxie. So, are you going to go <laughs> head to the Hotel Espana, where you know Larkin is staying, or how would you like to approach this? Mm. Or is there anything you'd like to do in preparation for that encounter? I definitely want to go back to the hotel and mm -hmm. get strapped, because there's monsters mm. afoot. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, in it's the city. Yeah. It's uh. not like, you know... Oh, it's it's absurd to go about armed in the city where it's safe and whatever. Blah. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw to some grab that shit under the shoulder holster, you know, keep it nice and hidden. And... Right. <laughs> it's about time to sling the twelve gauge over your back in full view, <laughs> out of the bandolier shells across the chest. Um, Colt forty five peacemaker on the hip. Sure. Derringer in the boot. Can I do any more research? Like, because I'm just wondering, because like, the library I was at before, that was different than this university? Like, do they right. have a different library mm -hmm. here? They would have the university library here. Can I do some research there? If you guys want to coordinate either to meet up later to confront Larkin, or to have some of them go to talk to Larkin while you research or whatever, it's up to you guys how you want to handle that. But yes, you would have well, access to the here. university library if you book. Yeah, yeah, I don't have to go with Larkin. You guys can go talk to Larky Larks. I need some solo time with this weapon. Bet you do. Mm -hmm. It's all greasy. You're like, polish this sword. <laughs> oh, you want to do uh, Shiva? Solo time. <laughs> Drug induced. Uh, thinking about that sword. You got to do, yeah, something. <laughs> Solo time in the library doing some studying. I mean, the muscle men. The muscle men go do muscle men stuff. Yeah, yeah. go so punch this is things. Nice because, like, like I said, in D and D, there's a very, there are very clear reasons 
why you should not split the party. Right. <laughs> because the balance is built around the makeup and the number. Um, but in Call of Cthulhu, especially because time is typically the factor more than most other things, it makes sense to split up based on what you're good at <laughs> um, or to cover as much ground as possible. Obviously, there are cases where I can bite you in the butt if you're being hunted by something. Don't worry about that. <laughs> um, I'm sure you'll be fine. Don't uh, worry about it. <laughs> the other thing I was wondering about is would I be able to talk to the local authorities to, it sounds creepy, but get in on the autopsy? Mm. To observe. You could definitely try. Okay. You may certainly try. Mm. Um, which would you like to try to handle first? The, the library or heading to the authorities? Well, is there any way I can figure out like how long it's going to be? Like, Because I don't know that I speak the language, but um, I think Elias does, doesn't he? He does and Isaac does. Oh. Hey, buddy. Hey. What's up? <laughs> um, yeah, could we, could we do that? Could you talk to the authorities and find out about me going in? We can give it a try. Be a little... So, so um, two rolls we'll need to make. One for you, which okay. is going to be whatever social skill you want to use, like persuade or what have you, to give him the right language okay. to talk about this. Um, and then for you, you can communicate in Spanish on a basic level without a role. Okay. Your role is going to just see how well that's being influenced, but I want to see what your role is first to determine what he gets. Persuade? Yes. Success. Okay. So you can have a bonus die to yours to see how well that comes across. Mm -hmm. Crazy nun, choppy chop, dead body. 66. So, not. Not. So regular, regular old fail. Let me see what... Okay. Um, they seem reluctant to have you in there as part of like the procedure because mm -hmm. they're like, what? And like you're introducing her like as a, like a nun, basically mm -hmm. as a religious person. Mm -hmm. And so they kind of get the idea of maybe of like what you mean is like last rites or something like that. Mm -hmm. And they were like, well, you can, yeah, come in and do rites. Like we have a priest, but sure. Okay. Um, but you know, yeah, you're not it. a doctor, so. Yeah. There is the other option of, you know, opening up the coffers of the Vatican or, you know. But True. Also. <laughs> True. Greasing that. Can one. I do that? Do I have a bribe option? Um, if I'm you have not on my list. credit rating. You oh, is that how that works? Rating. Yeah. Can I do that? Yeah, roll credit rating. <laughs> so you're, like, trying to explain this, like, no, she's a nun, like, blah, blah. And um, then... You don't mm -hmm. make it? No. You had a good chance of doing it, though, so that was a good idea. And that's definitely something you can do going forward. Credit rating lets you kind of <laughs> flex your reputation, what you have access to. Like, right. The poop would smile kindly upon this sort of thing. <laughs> that's all going to be credit rating okay. stuff, for sure. Um, but yes, they say, fine, you can come in to participate in last rites, but, you know. Right. Don't get weird about it. No, that's weird. Weird. I'm not going <laughs> to hump the body or anything. Yeah. Um, and so they give you basically a card with the medical examiner office address on it in Lima. Totally fits on my bed. <laughs> and uh, and tell you that it should be completed later this this evening in a, a rough time of when they expect okay. the body to be ready. Then I'll go research until okay until, until that time. time. Okay. Please. All right. So you're heading to the library. You're heading to the hotel. And you two are heading to the hotel temporarily to get gear and then going mm -hmm. to the Hotel Espana to talk to Larkin. Before we split up, like make sure you're in eyesight of other people. Don't go off by yourself. Okay. I'm always being watched by Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> <You like that. laughs> and some guy's like, me? Jesus? <laughs> like, no. Like, okay. not me. Like, oh, yes. <laughs> Oh, don't be a stall at biblioteca. <laughs> oh, and someone points you in the direction. <laughs> like, you only think I know how to say. Thanks, <laughs> Tide. Donde esta la zapateria? El queso es viejo y moldeado. Did you say something about moldy cheese? Yeah. The yeah. little Encino man? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Aww. I remember that movie. All right. Um... <laughs> Brendan Fraser, nice. <laughs> yes, very Brendan Fraser heavy. This is a great time. Yeah. That's a good. <laughs> to look at Boop. divination rules. I need you to make a couple of rules. We'll start your process. 
Um, and Light then, up some candles. Yeah. Turn up the heat. <laughs> start <a> fire. <laughs> um, I'd like you to roll a d10. That's going to determine how long your ritual is going to take. Ten. Okay. So, no, not that. (laughs) But it's going to take you a few to like kind of get in the right space for this. Um, And then I need you to roll a d6. Five. Okay. If this is successful, it will cost you five magic points. Mm. Whoa. Okay. Are you all right with that? Yep. Okay. Cool. We'll leave you for now. Mm -hmm. Jessica. (laughs) Yes, ma'am. I'll have Sister Mary make another library use roll. Oh, balls. Uh, oh, dear. Oh, good heavens. I was not. Okay, not successful. Not successful. I'll say you have probably about three hours before you need to head out to go to the medical examination. Okay. You spend your first hour kind of looking through the stacks, like trying to check through the catalogs. Obviously, the language barrier being an issue. You haven't found anything yet that seems of interest or related to what you're looking for. Okay. All right, boys. Yes. Okay, you have an idea of what equipment you have with you, or are you just shoving everything you have, like, into no, pods? No, yeah, I think it's, like, sword belt. Yeah, just, like, the weapon Pistol. montage. It's the standard <laughs> yeah. montage. Brass knuckles are still <laughs> in the pockets. <laughs> like, Jack is pulled over by his weapons before you walk the street. You come out all Lima, like, Because it's, like, lumpy. ten minutes mm-hmm. away. Fiddle with the switchblade a little bit. And yeah. It's still good. Light up a cigarette. Let's go. <laughs> Straighten yeah. your cap. The, yeah. the last thing of the montage is the <laughs> with the zippo. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Instead of the knife just through the sure. belt, it's on the belt. And then peacemaker holster, yeah. bandolier of shotgun shells, shotgun <laughs> over that. <laughs> That's all the weapons I have, really. Oh, Although I do also have brass knuckles. Mm-hmm. And we have kind of a Tink. <laughs> <laughs> Brass knuckle. All right, so yeah, bro. Noise. Smart. <laughs> head to the Hotel España, which you were told by Larkin was where he and Mendoza were staying. Mm. It is a small hotel. It looks like it's about 12 rooms split onto two floors um, with small lobby um, it's on the corner of a busy street of shops in Lima District. Um, there's no like reception desk proper because it's a pretty small place, but there is a small white haired woman in a shawl that's sitting in the, the foyer. And mm. as you walk in, she's like, oh, hola. <laughs> <laughs> but it's decorated with bright primary colors, there are paintings and photographs on the walls, and there are statues and plants, and it seems very like over-decorated, like they're super proud of this place. They're like, the more stuff we can put in here, the better the hotel is. <laughs> Nita didn't tell us his room number or anything? No. You check in at the front desk. Well, there's a lady in the shawl saying hola. She said hola. Is there like a guest registry book or whatever? No. No? There's a lady like that. in a There's shawl. Just a lady in a shawl on a blank that? desk. Should we try Nothing. some languaging things there. and then to be like... Oh, right. no, <laughs> Fuck! Oh, okay, never mind. That's not that bad. That's regular success. Just being like Augustus Larkin. Just the whole thing I can see. Augustus Larkin. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, noting that you are no. foreigners and that Larkin is also a foreigner, or she's like, oh, of course, you all know each other. And she like directs you like upstairs, like kind of gives you an idea of where to go. Nice. Yeah. Noise. Let's go. Noise. Let's go. All right. Um, Jesse, you have a divination skill that you put points into, I'm assuming. I do. I'd like you to go ahead and roll that now. <laughs> Crazy wizard Jesse. <laughs> Jumped out on the hotel. Day. Because what do you have like a four? You're a... rolling so well. <laughs> <laughs> that is an extreme success. Yeah, it is. Extreme. Just crushing it. As you 
breathe in the fumes of whatever it is you're burning over these candles <laughs> in a little spoon. <laughs> um, you immediately feel the, the pull of the otherworldly. So you know this ritual is successful. So I'll have you go ahead and spend those five Fun. magic points, and we'll get back to what you learn here in a moment. Do we all use magic points, or is it something like... Because Jesse's clearly got magic a little more... Magic points are specifically used for like certain rituals and spells. Most characters okay. only learn those as you go through the adventure, because you pick up weird tomes and right. stuff like that. Jesse started the game with a little bit of weirdness. There. <laughs> so, <laughs> a little bit of flavor. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's fine. Uh, Jessica, go ahead and make your next library scroll for your second oh. tower. Ah! Uh -huh. Oh! Ho A extreme success? Oh, so under your lowest of numbers? Indeed. A queen success. A queen success! <laughs> Very good. Yes. Um, what is it that you were looking for in this library? Um, I wanted to see if I could find anything, anything more on the care, sorry. Mm -hmm. Anything on those, uh, the Great Temple. And anything on the Conquistadors, specifically the four that were mentioned. Okay. Um, Ruiz, Garrido. Why do you make me say Spanish things? <laughs> Ruiz, Garrido, Mendoza, and Just Valacero. Just speaking to the other countries, it gets better. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> none of us know how to say any of it. Um, yeah, so you definitely find some books, particularly that mention the Conquistador Figura, because he had returned to and died in Lima. Right. Um, and so there are various notes from, um, and what you find of most interest, from the priest that was attending to him. Do I get the priest's name by chance? Sure, what would you like it to be? Santiago. Yeah, so, <laughs> yes, it is Padre Santiago. That won't be confusing yeah. at all. Uh, no, whatever, I, no, I it's, it's now Padre oh, Santiago. Okay. All right, fair. Yeah. So Padre Santiago was the priest <laughs> handling um, the final care. I couldn't be a priest. Figueroa. Eric, that was the first thing that came to my mind. <laughs> <laughs> like, nope. Enrique. Enrique. <laughs> Could have done Marcos. <laughs> yeah. Padre Sleepy Jim. <laughs> yeah. Aime. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, oh. so it is Padre Santiago. Okay, and I don't see anything about, or I don't find anything about the other four... Um, there are Mentioned, some like, brief mentions of like the conquistadors who had come over with Pizarro, mm -hmm. um, that they had um, gone on a mission, like they had arrived in Lima, gone up to Lake Titicaca and the surrounding area every session, mm -hmm. and that Figueroa had returned suddenly and in a state of extreme illness. Okay. And had been cared for by priests before passing away, basically. And there are, with some time, you could probably also find accounts of that priest since you now have his name. Yeah, I was wondering that, and like yeah. if I saw any, like how the, we, we kind of ran into this Mendoza, like to, right. to see if there's a connection, if that is the same Mendoza, or... The name where it lists the conquistadors that were part of this group mm -hmm. certainly matches what right. um, Miss Rizzo's notes said of Luis de Mendoza. Okay, but no additional... Not at this time, but got for it. that role, that's what you find so far. You got okay. some places to go. All right, yeah. boys, you are going to Larkin's room. You are at the door, <laughs> described by the kindly white-haired woman in a shawl downstairs. Oh, I can see. Um, what would you like to do? Well, we should probably knock vigorously, <laughs> having the talk like a... <laughs> and Jules and Vincent. Jules and Vince is like, oh, it, give it like five minutes. Like, we're a little early. Let's All right. Bum, bum. So, it you knock and there's no response for a bit, and then there are some sounds inside as if like stumbling towards the door, and a very disheveled and tired, sickly-looking Larkin answers like squints against the light as he opens the door and you are greeted with just like the smell of like sickness and someone who's been like sweating in a small room. Oh, it's your favorite. Gross. All right. <laughs> Jesse. It's just yeah. like sex in here. Um, <laughs> you Dirty super sex. made your divination roll. You checked that box, right? Oh, yeah. Because you're going to want more divination. For sure. And you are performing this 
ritual, what is it? Are you asking a question or forming like a focus? What is it that you would like to divine? Uh, just trying to figure out the history of the item slash owner. Right. All right. So you and your historical and archaeological background is very helpful in decoding these things because you see what is clearly Mendoza that you were introduced to in the restaurant and that you apparently, your group apparently murdered while you were um, <laughs> saving artifacts from destruction during combat. And he is wearing like the full like shiny metal helmet and everything carrying this sword as they approach a very different looking version of Lima. And then you get a flash of, you know, various random killings of locals who don't want to provide appropriate offerings or submit to appropriate rule. And then you get flashes of these strange stone tunnels lined with this golden band um, all the way through the tunnels inlaid with these strange markings and them prying it off the wall and it looks exactly like the piece that is now in your possession oh. mm -hmm. dun, dun, dun. and then back in their camps in their tents with their donkeys because there's gotta be donkeys yeah. um they start this like intense hunger and this wasting away and then later the gunshot from Figueroa that gets Mendoza right in the head before he plunges his spooky mouth into Figueroa and you see the wound knit closed and then the last flash is today the sword being brandished against your fellows before things go dark Jessica yes Go ahead and make your next library use roll. Library. Mm. A hard success. Okay. So you are able to find a few journals from Padre Santiago, Santiago. matching the time period um, that you would expect from when he was caring for Figueroa. Okay. I will say you're probably running close to the time you should be leaving, mm -hmm. but you could certainly check them out, take them with you yeah. to review later because they're pretty hefty volumes. It's like, you know, a daily journal. Yeah. Today I ate bread. Like, you know. <laughs> and they're in Spanish. Yes, I will check those out. Okay. Por favor. Yep. Showing your nunly credentials. They're like, okay, just bring them back, whatever, and you're like, oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you head out. Bless you. All right, boys. Larkin has answered the door. He looks sick. He's coughing occasionally. What, What's going on? Oh. <coughs> kind of taken aback by his appearance. Sure. Strokes. He definitely <laughs> looks worse than he did at dinner. For the moment. Yeah. Well, Mr. Larkin, uh, you don't look well. Uh, how, how are you feeling, sir? Uh, like I told you, I, I uh, was a bit under the weather, um, but my man's been getting me some medicine to help me sleep. I'm sure I'll get over it soon. Well, about that, you see, we, uh, <laughs> encountered our man Mendoza at the museum at the university, having attacked a local student, and seems to have injured her most grievously. He's been taken into custody by the local authorities and we wanted to apprise you of the situation. Uh, thank you for letting me know. This is certainly al alarming. Are you going to be all right? Should we send for a doctor? Uh, no, I have plenty of medication inside. I'll, like I said, I just need to sleep this off before we head out. Should be... Um, Tomorrow afternoon, if that's going to work for for the group. All right. I am thinking you should stop taking that medication. I'm afraid it's uh, the only thing that's been helping me sleep. 
and he coughs again. Your man's already tried to kill one person. I'll say, let's see. He might be trying to stop you from getting to the temple. That's definitely, that's a, it's a good point. That's concerning. And he like kind of looks back towards the bed. Um, I'll have you both make spot hidden rolls. Hooray! Mm. <laughs> oh, did you just make yourself <laughs> your, a, a permit? Your permit? <laughs> Not done with it yet. Okay. <laughs> oh, not quite an extreme success. Hard success? Hard success. Okay. <laughs> I got a regular success. Okay. Um, with your success, you can see as he looks over his shoulder, there's a light on in the room. Um, looking back towards the bed, there is a bottle on the bedside table with a syringe next to it. Oh, okay. Kind of medicine. I'd say... You, probably more with your better success, can note that the label on the bottle, very confusingly, although you'd probably recognize what it is, um, says heroina ah, on it. <laughs> I wonder what that is. <laughs> um, otherwise, about- the other thing I would say that you notice is because it's obvious he just came from bed to answer the door. So his like shirt is slightly open. He's a little disheveled. And you can see, like, he has, like, a strange, like, tattoo kind of peeking up in the open part of his shirt. You can't make out exactly what it is, but, like, something you didn't know. Well, it's definitely before. a tattoo. It's yeah. not, like, just skin discoloration. No, it looks like, like a infection. tattoo. Although, speaking of skin discoloration, go ahead and roll medicine or first aid <laughs> if you'd like. <laughs> uh, hard success. You do <laughs> note that the... Like, the vessels close to the skin mm-hmm. are very dark and discolored. Okay, would I know if that's an infection or more uh, just because of the heroin? You don't recognize it as being drug-related. Mm. Don't forget to check any skills you're successful in. I will remind you repeatedly for now to make sure you get everything you need, but you guys have been making a lot of checks, so uh, I want to make sure you get I meant to ask you that. Is it's only the skills you're, skills you're successful on? Yeah, if you fail a roll, no check, unless it's a critical fail. Um, That's what Which no one is. Right. Okay. Yeah, no one's done that yet. <laughs> All right. Looking forward to it. All right. And um, Mark upon our, Should we try to persuade him to... Join us, get him away from this area. If there's more than just Mendoza, hmm. maybe we'll try to take this guy out. How concerned are you about keeping this guy alive? My boss sent me here to make sure, like, he got his part of whatever's going on, whatever we get from this place. So, okay, that guy's kind of important to that, to me doing my job. Eh. I accepted the invitation to the expedition for adventurous and spiritual reasons, so um, it's not something that I'm necessarily opposed to, so I think we should definitely... That, and it's just the right thing to do, to see to his safety if we think he's in danger. That being said, personally, all we can do is warn him but you know yeah. what I mean? Right. I can't tell him what to do, but you I can... fucking grab him. I was going to say, <laughs> you could, like, coerce him physically. I wouldn't, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm very much of a, like, you know, fucking, you're grown, ain't your dad, do what you want kind of guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'll tell you, hey, <laughs> but I won't, like, yeah. force you, whatever. We'll give it a shot. Uh... So intimidate would be more of me trying to impose myself and be like... Right. Like, you're going to come with me. You're going to do this. Yeah. All right, so I want to like persuade him. Flexing, like your suit's straining <laughs> against your... For your own yeah. safety. <laughs> I must For your insist. own safety, because... That you come with me. You just tear the sleeves off of your suit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we have reason to believe just... Mendoza has some other compatriots. You could take your coat and shirt off and just wear the vest. <laughs> just we could strip a vest and a bow tie. tie. Yeah. <laughs> or just the suspenders. Oh, <laughs> dang. Trousers. Like so I ain't persuading him. 
Right. He says uh, it would be very. <laughs> Thanks, Suvi. A stray cat wanders back. Um, <laughs> uh, says it would be very difficult for me to move the artifacts and what notes and maps I do have, but I will call the authorities, ask for extra guards to make sure no one visits upon me, and I will call our drivers and see if I can't move up the time for us leaving to Punya. So please be ready at dawn tomorrow we'll head out from the square. I think the faster we can move the more likely we, we can avoid anyone who might be trying to stop us. Mm. Mm. And pleasantness. Okay. But thank you. I, I, it's hard to believe that Mendoza would do such a thing. He's been, he seemed to be helping me faithfully for some time. Well, I can tell you, sir, upon my word, I know what I saw. And what I saw was Mendoza in monstrous form sucking the life out of that poor woman. I see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and he like it's like well good night gentlemen I'll see you in the morning <laughs> and he, the door closes and you hear the latch <laughs> on the door. Well, he didn't seem none too concerned. Mm. He didn't remark upon our armament either. Mm. Something's fucky. <laughs> Something's fucky. <laughs> All right. Meanwhile, uh, Sister Mary <laughs> Benedict. Yes. You are approaching the location where you were told to visit the body for last rites after examination. Yes. Um, and there is chaos. Oh, there are people huddling, holding each other, saying words you recognize, even though they're Spanish, as being devil and demon. Mm -hmm. um, nice. And moving closer to the building, Demonio. you see a man in, obviously, like, priest's garments, mm -hmm. but completely shriveled, like looks like he's been mummified for thousands of years. And that's where we'll go ahead and end what? today's session. <laughs> Thank you, Barbarians, for Do listening uh, <laughs> to our uh, playthrough of Mass of Narlapateth. Join us next time where we maybe get drained of all of our fats. Maybe we get to see some alpacas. Maybe we go to Lake Titicaca, what? everyone. Um, <laughs> Maybe you get to see alpacas? Yeah. I'm kind of real excited about that. Yeah. Maybe so. I just start blasting. Maybe <laughs> guinea pigs, even. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe happy bars? Maybe happy bars. We'll see. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you, everyone. And we'll see you next time. Thank you, barbarians, for listening to our latest episode of Masks of Nyarlathotep in Call of Cthulhu. We hope that you spent your rage and your sanity wisely. Our intro and outro feature music by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. We use Waltz, Unseen Horrors, and The Dread. We also use game sounds and ambiance by Sirenscape. You can check them out at sirenscape.com because epic games need epic sounds. And links to all of those are in the description. Thank you again, and we hope to see you next time. <laughs>